In this lab, we're looking for an unkeyed cookie that we can use to poison the cache. So let's switch to burp and go to proxy and HTTP history. And we want to grab the get request for the homepage for the slash endpoint and send it to repeater and then switch to repeater. I'm just going to edit the width here so it all fits. And then we want to answer the question, is this homepage a cache oracle? And a cache oracle is a page that gives away information or an endpoint that gives away information about the cache. So we can see that it is a cache oracle because it just told us that the cache was missed. The age for this cache response or non-cache response in this case is zero seconds and the max age is 30 seconds. If we resend that request, we get a cache hit. The age for our cached response is at 18 seconds, so it'll expire in 12 seconds. So that's really important. We need a cache oracle to be able to continue our probing. We've just found one, so we can continue. Now let's continue by adding a cache buster because I'm going to add a query parameter CB here for a value of cache buster and then some random input and send a request. You can see that we get a cache miss. If I resend the request, we get a cache hit. But if I modify the cache buster ever so slightly, just add a number here, we get a cache miss. So that confirms to us that the query string is part of the cache key. And we can use the query string as a cache buster to not impact other users that are visiting the actual home page without any query string while we do our probing. And it also speeds up our own testing because we can use a new cache buster for every new test that we do, just in case we want to make sure that we don't receive a cached response from the server. Now let's look for our unkeyed input. And we can already see that there's a front-end host cookie here, with the value of protcache01. The interesting thing is already is that this value protcache01 is reflected in the response here. So that means it's already um, a valid source for us to likely try to inject JavaScript. But the next thing is we want to make sure that this fe host cookie is not or is an unkeyed input. And the way we can test that is let's send this request again, just to make sure that we get until we get a cache hit. And then let's ever so slightly change the value of the cookie. And we did we change it to two, but we still see that we can get a cache hit. And we can see that still in the response pod cache zero one is reflected. And that means that unlike the query string, because if we change the query string to three, then we can see that we get a cache miss, get a cache hit now if you keep resending. But the front end host is unkeyed because even though we modify it, we still get a cache hit. I also wanted to note that if the application hadn't revealed the existence of the front end host cookie here, then you could also try finding it uh, in, a, in a different situation with Paraminer. So you just right click on the request, go to extensions, Paraminer, guess params, and then guess cookie parameters. You leave the defaults and then you click OK. I'm going to click cancel because I've already ran the scan. So if I go to target because I'm under the professional edition, then on the right side under severe cache poisoning one, I can see that Paraminer identified the unkeyed cookie input FE host here. Under the community edition, because I have that loaded as well, I ran the scan here too. So initiating the scan is the same thing. You just right click and go to extensions, etc. But to get the results from the scan, you go to extensions, you highlight Paraminer, and then you go to output. You can see here that on, under the community edition, Paraminer has also identified the unkeyed input uh, cookie front end host. So this unkeyed input uh, cookie is actually good news for us because it means that if we can inject something dangerous into this cookie, we can get that response, that dangerous response cached, and we can have it serve to users that are just browsing the normal homepage, especially if we remove our cache buster here, because then we would poison the cache for the actual homepage. So let's see what we can do with the input. If actually remove all the input here and resend the request, then we can see that we're within two double quotation marks. So let's see what we can do to escape that. So I'm going to switch to the lab and then open the developer console. And we are within a dictionary called data. And within data, we have a key front end. And then we are within double quotation marks here. So if we want to escape this double quotation mark, we need to do another double quotation mark. And then what we can do, because the first two double quotation marks are a string now, we can say empty string minus alert minus and then add another double quotation mark to close the second empty string here. If we hit enter, then we can see 
that works because we get an alert pop up. And the reason that works is because <laughs> JavaScript is actually really weird. Like it allows you to do things like this, where you can uh, subtract a integer from a string. You get back not a number, but it does work. So you can also do foo minus alert minus tree. And that would still give you the alert pop up because it's trying to execute that function to get its value. So that makes it really interesting. So let's do this again. One other thing you can do, because that's what the solution is doing, I think, is removing all the spaces. Let's see if that works. I don't think they're necessary. So we don't even have to URL encode any spaces or anything like that. Um, we don't have to mess around with anything. So if we hit Enter, that works as well. So let's copy this input here because we were already within the two double quotation marks. And then copy this switch to burp, and then paste this, and send a request. And we can see it reflected here in the response. So let's go to our cache buster here, copy it, and then go to close this and go to the version of the index of our cache buster. And yep, we get an alert pop up. So that's working. So all we need to do now is poison the actual front page and not the one for the cache buster. So let's go to burp. I think we need to modify this to alert one because that's what the lab is looking for. And then let's remove the cache buster and just resend this request. We get a cache miss. Let's send it again so we get a cache hit. And then switch back to the lab and go to the actual homepage without the cache buster. And let's refresh this. Yep, we get a uh, alert one pop up. We don't have the lab solved yet. The Victim is only browsing the website every 30 seconds, I think. And there we go, we've solved the lab. If the lab doesn't solve for you yet, all you need to do is go here and make sure that you keep repoisoning this front page before or right after the uh, cache expires, after the age hits 30 seconds. So just keep resending your request. And that way you can just continue until you've solved the lab. I hope this was helpful to you and thank you for watching.